Hello friends, my name is Mohamed Imran. I am a second year MBA student. So in this video, we are going to study about the purine catabolism that is degradation of purine nucleotides and gout which is very important for biochemistry exam. So if you are a first year MBA student, I would recommend you to watch this video from start to end for better understanding. So let's start with the purine catabolism. Before starting with this catabolism, I would recommend you to watch my previous videos on purine metabolism. By purine biosynthesis pathway and salvage pathway, AMP, GMP and IMP are formed. So we have studied purine biosynthesis pathway and salvage pathway in previous videos. Now we are going to study about the degradation of AMP, GMP and IMP. The end product of purine catabolism is uric acid. You should remember this. The end product of purine catabolism is uric acid. Now let's study the pathway of purine degradation. As we can see AMP, IMP and GMP would get converted into respective nucleoside form that is adenosine, inosine and guanosine with the help of enzyme nucleotidase. Now this adenosine gets converted into inosine with the help of adenosine deaminase that is ADA because the purine nucleoside phosphorylase is not capable to convert adenosine to hypoxanthine or any degraded form. So, the adenosine gets converted into inosine with the help of adenosine deaminase but the guanosine is capable of converting it to a degraded state uh, with the help of enzyme purine nucleoside phosphorylase guanosine gets converted into guanine now this inosine with the help of enzyme purine nucleoside phosphorylase it gets converted to hypoxanthine this hypoxanthine further gets degraded to xanthine with the help of enzyme xanthine oxidase this is a very important enzyme and the guanine with the help of guanase gets converted into xanthine. Again, this xanthine with the help of enzyme xanthine oxidase gets converted into final product that is uric acid. In humans, the uric acid is the final degraded product of purine. So, but in case of animals other than man, that is humans, degradation of uric acid, the uric acid would get converted into allantoin with the help of enzyme uricase. Again, this allantoin with allantoinase gets converted into allantoic acid again with the help of enzyme allantoicase it gets converted into urea with the help of enzyme urease the ammonia is the final degraded product of purines in other animals as we have completed the degradation of purines now let's study the disorders of purine metabolism mainly gout what is hyperuricemia hyperuricemia is elevation of serum uric acid the normal range of uric acid is 3 to 7 mg per deciliter. The normal range of uric acid is 3 to 7 mg per deciliter and uricosuria is increased uric acid excretion. Now, what is gout? Gout is because of overproduction of uric acid. The overproduction of uric acid or decreased excretion of uric acid from the body. So, the soluble form of uric acid is sodium urate in severe hyperuricemia it gets deposited in the joints the terminology for this is toffee and uh, because of this deposition in the joints there is inflammation in the joints because of this inflammation this condition is called gouty arthritis deposition of sodium urate crystals in the joints and this causes gouty arthritis moving on to the causes of gout we are going to understand the causes of gout with the help of this pathway and before studying this pathway you must know the purine biosynthesis pathway and purine degradation pathway which would make it very easier for you to understand the first step is from carbohydrate metabolism that is glycogen glucose would get converted into glucose 6 phosphate and this glucose 6 phosphate would get converted into glucose with the help of glucose 6 phosphatase i have written these enzymes in red color it shows that there is something wrong with this enzyme which would lead to increased uric acid production. So this glucose 6-phosphate passes through the HMP shunt and the enzyme is glutathione reductase. I have again marked this in red which shows there is something wrong with glutathione reductase which would lead to the formation of ribose 5-phosphate. As we know that the purine biosynthesis pathway starts with ribose 5-phosphate, we get ribose 5-phosphate from HMP shunt and this ribose 5-phosphate with the help of enzyme PRPP synthetase gets converted into PRPP that is phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. Now this PRPP combines with glutamine and from the ribose 5-phosphate purine biosynthesis pathway starts. So now this PRPP combines with glutamine 
with the help of enzyme PRPP glutamyl amido transferase. Again, I have written this in red color and uh, it gets converted into 5 phosphoribosyl amine. And now we are going to skip the further steps of purine biosynthesis and we get the final product that is inosin monophosphate. We are skipping the steps in between because they are of no use in gout. Uh, now this inosin monophosphate, as we know that by salvage pathway, hypoxanthine can be converted into inosin monophosphate with the help of enzyme HGPRT. HGPRT is hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase. Same for guanine with the help of HGPRT enzyme, it gets converted into GMP and adenine gets converted into AMP with the help of another enzyme that is not HGPRT. Now, now this hypoxanthine in presence of enzyme xanthine oxidase gets converted into xanthine. Again, this xanthine in presence of xanthine oxidase gets converted into uric acid. We get the final product of purine degradation. So this allopurinol inhibits this enzyme that is xanthine oxidase. So what is primary gout? Primary gout is inborn error of metabolism due to overproduction of uric acid. As we have studied the causes of increased uric acid production in gout by the following pathway that we have studied now. Now we are going to go through the causes one by one starting with increased PRPP synthetase. Going back to the pathway, here it is. This is PRPP synthetase which converts ribose 5-phosphate to PRPP that is phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. Usually we have a feedback control but in case of this disease that is gout we don't have a feedback control so there would be increased PRPP synthetase so there would be increased production of purine so there would be more purine to get degraded so this would lead to increased uric acid production which would get deposited in the joints leading to gout. The second cause is increased PRPP glutamyl amidotransferase the reason is same that is there is no feedback control in this. This would lead to increased production of purines. So there would be increased production of uric acid leading to gout. The third cause is HGPRT deficiency. The HGPRT deficiency also leads to Le uh, Lesage-Nyhan syndrome. And uh, the fourth cause is glucose 6-phosphate deficiency. This is related to glycogen uh, metabolism. It is a type 1 glycogen storage disease also called von Gaeck disease. Now going back to the pathway, here we can see glucose 6-phosphate. So there would be decreased glucose 6-phosphate in gout. So glucose 6-phosphate would not get converted into glucose. So more glucose 6-phosphate would be available for a champion and this would lead to production of ribose 5-phosphate and this ribose 5-phosphate would lead to more production of purines and which would lead to increased production of uric acid which would get deposited leading to gout. And the last one is increased glutathione reductase. As we can see in the pathway, here it is the glutathione reductase. The glutathione reductase would provide more NAD plus for HM patient. If glutathione reductase provides more NADP plus in HM patient, it would lead to more production of ribose 5-phosphate. And this ribose 5-phosphate would lead to more biosynthesis of purines, which would get degraded again to uric acid. So the excess uric acid would again get deposited in the joints leading to gout. In professional exams, you have to write these five causes and that pathway and the definition of gout and hyperuricemia in the normal range that would be enough for a five marks question. Now coming to secondary gout. The secondary gout is also increased production of uric acid not by the following causes we have studied by other causes like cancers, leukemia, polycythemia, lymphomas and psoriasis and trauma and there is a term for deposition of calcium pyrophosphate crystals in joints and the clinical manifestations are same as of gout but in gout there is deposition of uric acid crystals but if there is a deposition of calcium pyrophosphate crystals in joint and this condition is called pseudo gout but the clinical manifestations are exactly similar to gout there would be inf inflammation swelling in the joint etc now coming to the treatment if you are a first year MBBS student you have to memorize these drugs like allopurinol probenacid anti-inflammatory drugs like colchicin corticosteroid endomethacin and phenylbutazone you don't have to go in detail you just have to write the four five drugs in the exam because you would study this in detail again in second year in pharmacology 
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग होप यू लाइक दिस वीडियो मेक श्योर यू हिट द लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब बटन फॉर मोर वीडियोज रिलेटेड टू मेडिकल फील्ड